Hi and welcome back to Sunsummit. In this video we're going to talk about the cardiomyopathies, their causes, their clinical signs and symptoms, the way you diagnose them and how you treat them. So let's just break down the definition. Cardio means heart, myo means muscle, pathy means defect or disease. So in other words it's an intrinsic defect of the myocardial fibers. As cardiomyopathies are quite rare, you usually use them for diagnosis of exclusion. Essentially, if the heart problem is not due to some inflammation such as myocarditis or if there is uh, no congenital defect or valvular or ischemic coronary, you name it. There are many different types of cardiomyopathies, but we're going to focus on three of them, the dilative, hypertrophic and the restrictive. What you will see that is common for all cardiomyopathies is the exercise intolerance, which essentially means that you will have a shortness of breath upon exercise. This is usually due to the, the cardiac output, which is the amount of blood that is pumped out of the heart in a minute, is lowered. Let's start with the dilated cardiomyopathy. This is the most common type, making up for more than 90% of all cardiomyopathy cases, and this can occur at any age uh, due to its causes. Let's start with features of uh, the dilated cardiomyopathy and you can compare it to the normal heart to the left. As the ventricles are dilated, there will be a failure in systole, which is essentially a failure in contraction of the ventricles. And due to this, for every time the atria try to pump in the blood into the ventricles, there will be a sort of splashing sound when you auscultate the heart. Uh, this sound is called the S3 sound or ventricular gallop and this will be your third heart sound, the others being the S1 and S2. One of the essential features of the dilated cardiomyopathy it is the lowered ejection fraction. Ejection fraction is the fraction of blood that is pumped out of the ventricles per beat and normally the value of this is above 55 percent but in this type of uh, condition the value will be as low as 20 or 30 percent or even lower in some ca in some severe cases. So what else do we see is the annular dilation of the valves. Essentially here you see the valves and as the ventricles dilate so uh, the valves will follow with them. There is actually no real uh, defect in the valves themselves or its supporting components such as the papillary muscles or the chordae tendineae but as one thing gets dilated the others follow essentially. And as a result of this, for every time the ventricles contract, this causes a regurgitation of blood back to the atria, which causes an enlargement of them. And enlarged atria will also cause other problems such as atrial fibrillation. And with atrial fibrillation, there will be an increased force and pressure that will fall upon the ventricles for every atrial beat causing there to be a further damage of the endocardium and as a result thrombi might form and the thrombi might sometimes fall off and become emboli which will get into your general circulation. However, when you see the heart through an x-ray you would most likely see that the heart starts to become more roundish, enlarged and roundish like a ball uh, due to the dilation of all four chambers and some people usually describe it as floppy shaped. Other defect, uh, defective uh, features that you will see will be bundle branch blocks. Uh, this is caused by bundle branch that uh, goes uh, along the heart will be stretched out and eventually there will be a block formation there. But another very important feature of the dilated cardiomyopathy it, it is that it causes a progressive heart failure and its uh, features will be very similar to congestive heart failure. Is essentially from the left side there will be a weakness and lethargy and a pulmonary edema and from the right side the failure you will see distended uh, jugular veins, liver congestion, GI congestion, enlargement of the spleen and edema formation. So out of the causes the two most important is the is alcohol and idiopathic which essentially means I really don't know and uh, then you have other causes such as cocaine some infectious causes such as Coxsackie B virus, Chagas disease that is caused by Treponisoma cruzi found in most commonly in South America and also you will see it in connection with somebody receiving uh, chemotherapy for some lymphomas uh, and the chemotherapy drug being adriamycin or danorubicin. Then there is uh, there is also related to pregnancy. not 
during the pregnancy but throughout the delivery there has been some uh, associations. The genetic cause uh, is usually a problem in the sacromere of the muscles or it can also be the, the defect in their mitochondria. In some cases, uh, light chain kinase is uh, the components. And here you see a mnemonic for it. So how would you diagnose uh, dilated cardiomyopathy? You diagnose it with echocardiogram. Here you see two essential signs of systolic failure and lowered ejection fraction. What will be the cause of death? The atrial fibrillation, which can uh, kill you by two reasons. Either it can progress to ventricular fibrillation or uh, due to thromboembolite that can cause a stroke, for instance. And also the heart failure itself can uh, be the cause of death. So how would you treat it? Uh, the most common treatment is the treatment of sim uh, symptoms. You will give aspirin and anticoagulants to lower the risk of thrombi and emboli. You would give uh, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and diuretics to lower the end diastolic volume. You would give spironolactone to uh, reduce the remodeling of the heart and digitalis to increase the contractility. But the best treatment is a heart transplant and uh, this is actually the most common indication of a heart transplant. The prognosis unfortunately for dilated cardiomyopathy for five years is only 25% as it's a very severe case and there are not enough heart transplantations. Uh, so here you see a clinical vignette and what you need to focus on is that the person here is drinking alcohol on daily basis for a very long period of time. You hear the S3 gallop signs and rails on the right lung base and that the x-ray shows an enlarged rounded heart and pleural effusion. The pleural effusion being due to the progressive heart failure. So here is a picture of the dilated cardiomyopathy and uh, to the right you see how it has a ball shape uh, appearance on uh, the x-ray. So the next cardiomyopathy we're going to talk about will be the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. The hypertrophic cardiomyopathy has many different names such as idiopathic, subaortic, uh, stenosis, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy or idiopathic uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But all of them have the same feature. It is that they have excessive asymmetrical hypertrophy which is essentially an enlargement. And here you see the opposite of dilative cardiomyopathy. You see a diastolic failure, which essentially means failure of relaxation as the heart is, has become hypertrophied. And also as a result of increased hypertrophy, the heart muscles get stronger and they eject even higher amount of blood, usually more than 60-70%. So the ejection fraction will increase. But here, you, uh, here, however, you also hear another heart sound called the S4 or atrial gallop. And this is due to the, whenever the atria contract, you will hear a fourth sound that resembles uh, some fluid going into a harder surface. The harder surface is not uh, merely due to the hypertrophy, but also due to the recurrent infarctions they get there and uh, there will be a lot of scar tissues there. So how would you see the clinical sign and symptoms? They are very, very unspecific. You will have shortness of breath. You will have syncope, which is essentially a fainting. You will have a chest pain, which is angina, and you will hear palpitations, and it's common that people get dizzy. But they are very unspecific, so it can happen to everyone. However, this should uh, come to your mind if you see a young person, especially an athlete, that comes with these symptoms to you. The causes is essentially genetical. Uh, it's autosomal dominant, meaning that uh, every generation will get it. The, uh, and it's also idiopathic, which means once again, I really don't know. And uh, if you really don't know, then you can blame the genetics. So here's a picture of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. To the right, you see how much bigger the ventricles, uh, muscles have enlarged. And as a result, for every time they contract, they will cause a regurgitation back to the atria. And you will see an enlarged atrium, which later can also cause atrial fibrillation and formation of thromboemboli. And you see that the enlargement is quite asymmetrical. By this I mean mo most commonly is that this can occur in the septum. And you see the septum, which is here, is uh, much larger than the free wall of the ventricle. One of the other name is uh, being the subaortic stenosis. You see that the septum, which is just below the aorta, will cause an obstruction outflow. And this can uh, 
becomes so big that it uh, completely obstructs the outflow causing all of these symptoms but most importantly it can cause a sudden cardiac death. How would you diagnose it? You can diagnose it by ECG you, where you will see atrial enlargement and fibrillation and as we mentioned the left ventricular hypertrophy and axis deviation. You can diagnose by echo where you will see hypertrophy and active motion of the mitral valve due to the regurgitation. But most importantly uh, is the histology. Uh, the myofibril uh, disarray essentially means that the normal alignment of the myocardial cells is disrupted and you will see a lot of interstitial fibrosis. So what would be the cause of death in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? It's, uh, it can be sudden cardiac death in young athletes such as a basketball player, a football player or you name it. It can be due to the atrial fibrillation, which can either precipitate to ventricular tachyarrhythmias or by thromboemboli or ventricular arrhythmias. The treatment is essentially that you give uh, beta blockers or calcium channel blockers. Other important treatments uh, is uh, by a surgical removal of the enlarged area. But there is also one more interesting treatment which is alcohol ablation. This essentially means that you insert the catheter into the vessels uh, and follow it uh, back to the heart and then you apply alcohol to the hypertrophied area which will cause uh, infarction of that area and after the infarction will be a fibrotic event which will cause a contraction and decreasement of the size of the hypertrophied area. The last cardiomyopathy is the restrictive type. And here the main problem is myocardial infiltration. So there are some toxic substances that infiltrate the heart and lower the compliance of the heart and causing it to be rigid. So there can be, essentially there will be a systolic and a diastolic uh, problems or failure. And with these two problems follows the S3 and S4 heart sounds. The ejection fraction here, it can be everything from subnormal to very low. The problems here you will see is mitral regurgitation uh, due to si similar causes as I mentioned to the previous cardiomyopathies, increased jug uh, jugular venous pressure due to the heart failure problems, ascites, once again the heart failure, same with splenomegaly and Kuzmal sign. The Kuzmal sign being that the jugular venous pressure goes up upon inspiration. In normal cases it's the opposite. So what can be causes of restrictive cardiomyopathy? There can be many different, everything from amyloid, uh, which is essentially formation of abnormal proteins that cannot be digested in extracellular space. It can be some idiopathic diseases uh, that c causes non-caseating granulomas, such as sarcoidosis. It can be iron overload in hemochromatosis. It can be cancer of the heart and fibrosis due to the destruction or due to radiation therapy. Uh, for instance, if you add uh, some lung tumor and the radiation will damage the heart. It can be some autoimmune causes such as uh, fibroblast overactivation seen in uh, systemic scleroderma. It can be hyperacinophilic uh, syndrome, which is essentially that you have um, for some reason an increased amount of acinophils, which will damage the lungs, but in a subtype of it uh, called the Loeffler syndrome that they will cause a damage to the endocardium and also the radiation to chest can cause this restrictive cardiomyopathy. The diagnosis is uh, usually by x-ray you will see enlargement of the heart due to the infiltration and uh, signs of pulmonary congestion due to the failure. Electrocardiograph uh, will usually give you some conduction problems such as blocks and Q waves, the pathological Q waves due to the multiple infarctions that are correlated with this pro uh, condition. And in the echocardiogram you will see that the myocardium is quite stiff and rigid. When it comes to treatment there is actually no specific so therefore you just treat the underlying cause. And that's uh, about it about different types of cardiomyopathy. Thank you for listening.